science, the pursuit of truth, the world's smartest people band together to solve our existential problems. You pay with your tax dollars, they give you the sci-fi future you always dreamed of, without diseases, pollution or misinformation. At least, this is what I thought before starting my academic career, and I believe that many people also have the same idea. In this video, I will give you the inside scoop of how the pursuit of scientific truths are actually conducted, how well your tax money is wasted, and how dysfunctional academia actually is. First, who chooses to become a scientist? Imagine yourself back in high school. You had the cool kids, you had the stoner kids, you had the alternative kids, and you also had the nerdy kids. The nerdiest of the nerds choose to per se a STEM field in college. Out of these kids, the ones with the lowest IQ or the highest predatory sexual tendencies become high school science teachers. The highest achieving nerd or the ones with any social skills get a well-paying job as an engineer. This leaves us with the medium achievers with low social skills that pursue a PhD because they lack any direction in life and thinks that staying in academia is a safe incubator for their kind. After this, nerdiest of the nerd kids gotten pummeled by a PhD program for 3 to 7 years, surviving soap opera type drama, and made a couple of postdoctoral visits to other laboratories for about 3 more years, it is time for this person to apply for money in order to fund his research. From this point on, until the end of his career, 40% of his total working time consists of trying to raise money, 30% of his working time gets eaten up by administrative tasks, and about 20% of his time goes to teaching, which leaves us with about 10% time to actually do research. In short, a person educates themselves for 13 years in order to work 4 hours a week with what they are actually qualified to do. Second, there is another layer of dysfunctionality on top of this. Imagine that you pay a hundred dollars to a scientist to solve global warming or cure cancer or whatever. In Sweden, up to 50 dollars are taken by the university as an overhead. The reason why this cost is so high is that the university has to rent their buildings from a state-owned landlord called Akademiska Hus. So they can charge whatever rent they want and the scientists are powerless and have to pony up whatever they can. I guess the reason for this is that the government can leech off grant money and transform it into tax money, which they can use for other things like the ones that happened in 2015. Thirdly, it is about how ethically the scientists write their grant applications. Since they are desperate for money, they will write whatever they can to get funded, even if it's flat out bullshit. The funding agencies often require that the research will lead to something useful for society. Thus the scientists lie and claim that this will have a major impact, even though they know that it's a theoretical impossibility. If they are blessed and get money, they will go straight back to doing whatever they find interesting. Scientists tend to be a little bit like autistic people who can fascinate themselves over completely irrelevant subjects, such as stamps or trains or the order of names in the yellow pages. In summary, by only working 10% on solving problems, getting robbed of their resources by the university and focusing on irrelevant topics, scientific research as conducted on universities is a huge waste of money. Thank you guys for watching this video and if you liked it leave a thumbs up and if you didn't like it leave a, leave a thumbs down and please comment why this video is bad or why I'm wrong and why science actually works. And don't get me wrong, I actually really really like science and I think the scientific process is the only, well it's the one, it's the best way of getting to a, an actual truth. However, the way it is persuaded in academia today, it's, it's so, so dysfunctional that it barely makes it worthwhile. And also, this is my first time making a YouTube video, so if you have any, any suggestions on how to improve my production quality, please leave a comment down below, I will greatly appreciate it. Since I don't have any subscribers yet, uh, 
any comment will be helpful actually. Yeah, uh, see you in the next video. Bye.